the night was thick with fog as I drove down the deserted country road. The dim glow of my headlights barely piercing the darkness that cloaked me like a suffocating blanket. The air was heavy with the smell of damp earth, the ominous atmosphere weighing heavily on my shoulders as I navigated the winding path ahead. I had taken a wrong turn, a simple mistake that would soon lead me down a path of terror and madness. As I pressed on, my heart pounding in my chest, a feeling of unease settled over me like a crashing wave. The road stretched out before me, its twists and turns shrouded in shadows, each corner holding the promise of untold horrors lurking just beyond the reach of my headlights. And then I saw it, a figure standing in the middle of the road, its form obscured by the fog, its eyes gleaming with an otherworldly light. Panic surged through my veins as I slammed on the brakes, the screech of tires echoing in the stillness of the night as I skidded to a halt. For a moment, I sat frozen in terror, my eyes locked with those of the mysterious figure that stood before me. And then, as if by some cruel twist of fate, it vanished into thin air, leaving behind nothing but the echo of its eerie presence. With trembling hands, I forced myself to continue down the road, the memory of the encounter burning like a brand into my mind. But no matter how far I drove, the figure seemed to haunt me at every turn, appearing and disappearing with each passing moment like a specter from beyond the grave. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, that there was a rational explanation for this creepy occurrence. For some reason, I am imagining that a dark figure had appeared before me on an empty road. Maybe I was sleep deprived or bored. My mind was playing tricks on me. But deep down, I knew that something was terribly wrong, that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. As the night wore on, the figure became more persistent, its ghostly presence growing ever more menacing with each passing encounter. No matter how fast I drove or how many turns I took, it was always there, lurking just beyond the edge of my vision. Desperation gnawed at my insides as I struggled to make sense of the nightmare that had consumed me. I could feel my sanity slipping away, the boundaries between reality and delusion blurring with each passing moment as the figure continued to haunt my every move. And then, in a moment of madness born of desperation, I made a decision that would change everything. With a roaring scream of anguish, I slammed my foot down on the gas, the engine roaring to life as I hurtled down the road in reverse, following the same path I had taken before. The world blurred into a whirlwind of motion as I raced through the night, the wind howling in my ears like a chorus of demons as I tore through the darkness. Every fiber of my being screamed for release for escape from the nightmare that had become my reality. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. With a final screech of tires, I came to a stop, the world around me spinning in dizzying circles as I struggled to catch my breath. And then, as if by some miracle, the fog lifted, the darkness receding like a tide as the first light of dawn crept over the horizon. As I stumbled from the car, my limbs trembling with exhaustion, I knew that I had broken the curse that had held me captive in its grasp. The figure was gone, banished back to the depths of the night from whence it came, and I was free, at last, free from the nightmare that had threatened to consume me whole. And though the memory of that fateful night would haunt me for the rest of my days, I took comfort in the knowledge that I had emerged from the darkness stronger than ever before. For sometimes, it is only in facing our deepest fears that we find the strength to overcome them, to emerge from the darkness into the light, forever changed but determined.
ready to face whatever horrors the world may throw our way. The scent of autumn leaves filled the air as I watched my little sister, Emily, playing in the backyard. Her laughter echoed through the crisp afternoon air as she danced alongside the fallen leaves, her giggles like music to my ears. But there was something about the way she moved, something unsettling in the way she seemed to be talking with someone or something that I couldn't see. Emily had always been a lively child, her imagination wild and untamed. But in recent weeks, she had become fixated on an imaginary friend who was called Sarah. She talked to Sarah constantly, whispering secrets into the wind as if she were sharing them with a trusted friend. At first, I dismissed it as nothing more than a child's colorful imagination a harmless game of make-believe. But as the days passed, I began to notice subtle changes in Emily's behavior. A distant look in her eyes, a hesitance in her voice that spoke of secrets too dark to share. One night, as I tucked Emily into bed, she turned to me with an intense expression on her face. Sarah says we have to be careful, she whispered, her voice barely above a breath. She says there are things out there that want to hurt us. I tried to reassure her, to convince her that Sarah was just a figment of her imagination. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to her imaginary friend than meets the eye. As the weeks went by, strange things began to happen in our house. Objects moved on their own. Strange shadows danced in the corners of our eyes and a chill seemed to settle over the once warm and welcoming atmosphere. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild, but deep down, I knew that there was something sinister lurking in the shadows. And then, one fateful night, Emily's whispers took on a desperate urgency, her voice trembling with fear as she spoke of the things that Sarah had told her, the things that lurked in the darkness waiting to claim us as their own. I tried to comfort her, to chase away the shadows that haunted her dreams, but it was no use. The darkness had already taken hold, its sinister arms wrapping around us like a suffocating blanket, choking the life out of everything we held dear. And then, one night, as I lay awake in bed, I heard Emily's voice drifting through the darkness, a soft, mournful whisper that sent shivers down my spine. I crept into her room, my heart pounding in my chest as I braced myself for what I would find. But when I opened the door, Emily was nowhere to be found. Instead, I found myself standing in a room bathed in darkness. Emily vanished without a trace. I searched every corner of the house, calling out her name into the darkness but there was no sign of her. Panic surged through my veins as I realized that she was gone, taken by the same darkness that had haunted our dreams for so long. For days, I searched tirelessly for Emily, my heart heavy with grief and despair. I refused to give up hope, clinging to the belief that she was still out there somewhere, waiting to be found. And then, just when all hope seemed lost, a glimmer of light pierced the darkness, a faint sound echoing through the stillness of the night. It was Emily's voice calling out to me from the depths of the forest that surrounded our home. With renewed determination, I followed the sound of her voice, my heart pounding in my chest as I pushed through the underbrush, branches snapping beneath my feet as I raced towards the source of the sound, and there, Standing at the edge of the clearing was Emily, alive and unharmed, her eyes shining with tears of relief as she ran into my arms. She told me of her journey through the forest, of the strange and wondrous sights she had seen, and of the kindness of the strangers who had helped her find her way home. 
As we made our way back to the safety of our house, I couldn't help but wonder about the darkness that had taken hold of our lives, about the mysteries that lurked just beyond the edge of our understanding. But in that moment, all that mattered was that Emily was safe, her spirit unbroken by the darkness that had threatened to consume her. And as we watched the leaves fall from the trees outside our window, I knew that no matter what horrors awaited us in the darkness, we would face them together, bound by a love that was stronger than any fear. The streets were slick with rain as I navigated my way through the maze of alleys and side streets, my headlights cutting through the darkness like a lighthouse beacon. I had been working as a food delivery driver for years, but nothing could have prepared me for the horror that awaited me on that fateful night. As I pulled up to the address on the delivery ticket, a sense of unease settled over me. The house stood before me its windows dark and menacing against the backdrop of the stormy sky. I hesitated for a moment, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as a chill ran down my spine. But duty called, and I pushed aside my apprehensions as I made my way up the front steps. The scent of rain and wet pavement met with the mesmerizing aroma of the food I carried in my hand. I knocked on the door, scrolling on my phone as I waited for a response. The door swung open with a creak, revealing an old woman standing in the shadows, a figure bent with age, her eyes dark and mysterious. She invited me inside with a crooked finger, her voice soft and hypnotic as she thanked me for the delivery. As I stepped into the dimly lit home, a wave of dizziness washed over me the air thick with a nauseating scent of decay and despair. I tried to shake off the feeling as I handed the woman the food, my hands trembling with fear and anxiety. But as she reached out to take the bag from me, she blew something in my face, a cloud of noxious fumes that repelled me backwards, my eyes burning with blurry vision and head spinning. I tried to fight back to push her away, but it was no use. The darkness closed in around me like a suffocating blanket, choking the life out of what consciousness I had left. With a last surge of strength, I stumbled towards the door, my vision blurred and my limbs heavy with exhaustion. I managed to make it outside, where I collapsed on the doorstep, gasping for breath as the world spun around me in dizzying circles. But as the darkness threatened to consume me, a spark of determination or maybe it was adrenaline, flared within my heart. With trembling hands, I managed to drag myself to my feet, staggering towards my car with a determination born of desperation. With fumbling fingers, I somehow managed to get my keys, the world swimming in and out of focus as I struggled to unlock the door. But at last, I managed to climb inside, slamming the door shut behind me and locking it hurriedly. With the last of my strength, I reached for my phone, calling 911 with fingers that felt like lead. I could hear the sound of sirens in the distance, growing louder with each passing moment, a signal of hope in the darkness that threatened to consume me whole. And then, just when all hope seemed lost, the police arrived, their lights flashing like beacons in the night. They found me slumped over the steering wheel, my breath coming in ragged gasps as I fought to stay conscious. With gentle hands, they helped me out of the car, leading me to safety as they searched the house for the woman who had tried to claim me as her own. And when they found her, they discovered the truth. She was a kidnapper, a predator who lured her unsuspecting victims by ordering food, only to trap the delivery driver. As they led her away in handcuffs, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. 
a feeling of victory in the face of unspeakable evil. The darkness had been defeated, it's all over, and I was free, free to live another day. felt like it stretched out endlessly, winding through the heart of the countryside as I desperately looked for a place to sleep. The sun set low on the horizon, casting long shadows across the landscape, guiding me towards the small town of Willow Creek, a place where I could finally rest. My eyelids drooped with exhaustion, the weariness of countless miles weighing heavy on my shoulders. The radio crackled with static, a faint reminder of the world beyond the confines of my car, a world that seemed distant and forgotten in the quiet embrace of the countryside. As the town of Willow Creek came into view, I felt a surge of relief wash over me, a relief from the endless expanse of the open road, a place where I could rest my weary bones and find comfort in the stillness of the night. The town appeared deserted, its streets bathed in the soft glow of street lamps that flickered like distant stars in the night sky. The air was thick with the scent of pine and earth. Parking my car on the quiet main street, I stepped out into the cool night air. The silence of the surrounded me. My footsteps echoed against the pavement a solitary rhythm in the empty streets as I made my way towards the dimly lit motel at the edge of town. The door creaked open with a mournful groan, revealing a dimly lit lobby surrounded by tattered wallpaper and worn carpeting. The clerk behind the front desk eyed me with weary resignation, his gaze hollow and empty as he handed me the key to my room. As I walked up the creaking staircase to my room, a sense of caution washed over me, like a reminder to stay vigilant in this unfamiliar town. The air grew heavy with the scent of must, the stench of something rotten and foul wafting through the stale atmosphere. Unlocking the door to my room, I stepped inside, the musty scent of old furniture and dust, a scent that clung to the walls like a spider in the corner of a ceiling, taunted me. The night passed in restless dreams, haunted by nightmares of darkness and despair, a restless journey through the depths of my own fears, each shadow cast by the moonlight. As the sunrise over the horizon, I awoke to the sound of sirens wailing in the distance, a signal of despair that shattered the fragile tranquility of the morning air. Looking out the window, I saw a swarm of activity engulfing the town square, a frenzy of flashing lights and frantic voices, a testament to the chaos that had descended upon Willow Creek. The sheriff stood at the center of the commotion, his face drawn and pale as he addressed the gathered crowd, a grim reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond the safety of their small town. Whispers of a killer on the loose filled the air spreading like wildfire through the streets. A shadowy figure stalking the night, preying on the unsuspecting souls who dared to venture into the darkness alone. But the killer remained elusive, a phantom in the night who slipped through the sheriff's grasp like smoke through his fingers. A silent killer whose presence lingered in the shadows. As the town descended into madness, I knew that my time in Willow Creek was drawing to a close. As I hurriedly packed my belongings and made my escape from Willow Creek, a sense of relief washed over me, a fleeting reprieve from the clutches of darkness that had threatened to consume me whole. But as I approached my car, a chill swept through the air, a chill that spoke of unseen eyes watching from the shadows of a presence lurking just beyond the edge of sight, and there, nestled beneath the windshield wiper, was a single piece of paper, a note left by the killer, 
a warning written in blood red ink. Trembling, I unfolded the note, my hands shaking with fear and uncertainty. The words stared back at me, taunting and cruel, a grim reminder of the horrors that lurked within the depths of Willow Creek. If you ever return, the note read, each letter etched with malice and menace, there will be another victim. My heart froze in my chest, a cold dread settling over me like a shroud, a warning that echoed in the depths of my soul, a promise of unspeakable horrors yet to come. With a shudder, I crumpled the note in my trembling hands, casting it aside like a curse too terrible to bear. And as I drove away from Willow Creek, the weight of its secrets heavy upon my conscience, I knew that I would never forget the darkness that had stained its streets, the darkness that had claimed the lives of the innocent and left a trail of broken souls in its wake. For in the heart of Willow Creek, a killer still roamed free, a shadowy figure lurking in the depths of the night, waiting to strike again when least expected. And though I had escaped its grasp for now, I knew that the horrors of Willow Creek would forever haunt me. The moon hung high in the midnight sky, casting its reflection upon the dark surface of the lake. My friends and I had decided to travel to the town's famous haunted lake, seeking a thrill and adrenaline rush. As we stood on the shore, the air was thick with the scent of pine and anticipation, the promise of adventure hanging heavy in the night. It started as a dare, a playful challenge whispered amongst ourselves. The lake, rumored to be haunted at 3 a.m., intriguing us with its dark depths and mysterious allure. With each passing moment, the air grew colder, the silence of the forest broken only by the soft lapping of water against the shore. As the clock struck three, we stood on the edge of the lake, our hearts pounding with adrenaline and excitement. One by one, my friends jumped into the water, their laughter echoing through the night like a haunting melody. The moonlight danced upon the surface, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch and twist with each ripple. It was then made up another date, a challenge to swim out into the lake alone to see who could survive the haunted waters the longest. With nervous laughter, my friends took turns plunging into the darkness, disappearing beneath the surface of the dark waters. Yet, as each one resurfaced, their smiles disappeared, replaced by a hint of unease and remorse. I watched from the shore, my heart pounding in my chest, as I waited for my turn to face the challenge. Despite the warmth of the summer night, a chill settled over me, a result of the horrors that awaited beneath the surface. As the last of my friends emerged from the water, I took a deep breath, preparing myself for what was to come. With hesitant steps, I jumped into the lake the icy water sending shivers up and down my spine. The darkness hugged me, swallowing me whole as I swam further from the safety of the shore. With each stroke, the water grew colder, its depths unfathomable and unknown. The moonlight flickered overhead, casting eerie shadows that danced upon the surface of the waters. The air was thick with the scent of decay, a foul odor that clung to the water. As I swam further from the shore, a sense of unease settled over me, a feeling of being watched by unseen eyes that lurked just beyond the darkness. The whispers of the forest grew louder, a chorus of voices that seemed to echo through the night, urging me to turn back before it was too late. But I couldn't back out from the challenge so soon, and I was determined to see it through to the end. With each stroke, I pushed myself further into the darkness, my heart pounding in my chest as I braved the haunted waters of the lake. Yet, as I reached the center, a chill ran down my spine, 
a presence lurking just beneath the surface, waiting to drag me down into the depths below. It was then that it happened, a hand reaching up from the depths, its icy grip closing around my ankle with a vice-like grip. Panic surged through me, adrenaline coursing through my veins as I struggled against the unseen force that sought to drag me down into the abyss. With a desperate cry, I fought against the darkness, clawing my way towards the surface with every ounce of strength I possessed. The water churned around me, a whirlpool of terror that threatened to swallow me whole. Yet, with each stroke, I felt the spirits of the lake pulling me deeper into their grasp, their whispers of despair echoing through the night. As I broke the surface, gasping for air, I saw them, the faces of the drowned, their eyes empty and hollow, staring into the void with a haunting intensity. The spirits of the lake had awoken, their fury unleashed upon those who dared to disturb their slumber. With a surge of adrenaline, I swam towards the shore, the darkness closing in around me. The whispers of the forest grew louder, what sounded like a thousand voices echoed through the night, urging me to leave before it was too late. As I stumbled onto the shore, my friends rushed to my side, their faces pale with fear as they helped me to safety. The spirits of the lake had stopped, their wrath calmed by our escape from the darkness that lurked beneath the surface. As we made our way back to the safety of the car, the air was thick with the scent of decay, a reminder of the horrors we had witnessed in the dead of night. The night swim had gone horribly wrong, a journey into the depths of darkness that would haunt us forever. Even though we escaped with our lives, the memory of that fateful night would forever be etched into our minds, a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurk just beneath the surface of those haunted waters. The darkness always seemed to linger a little longer in my small corner of the world. With no one but my own thoughts for company, I found myself engaging in the simple act of watching the world outside my window. My neighbors' lives unfolded before me like scenes in a silent movie, and I, the lonely spectator, drank in every detail with hungry eyes. Tonight was no different. As the chill of winter seeped through the glass panes, I found myself drawn once again to the comforting glow of the street lights outside. Across the way, the neighbor's house stood silent and still, its windows aglow with warm hues. I watched as they moved about their kitchen, their figures illuminated by the soft light of flickering candles. It was a scene straight out of a storybook a romantic dinner for two, complete with wine and laughter. For a moment, I allowed myself to bask in the warmth of their shared happiness, a glimpse into a world I could only imagine. But then, as if summoned by the darkness itself, a chill swept through the room, extinguishing the candles in its wake. I watched in horror as the shadows danced and swirled, twisting and contorting into dark, tall, shadow-like figures. And then, it happened. A figure emerged from the darkness, a spirit neither living nor dead, its eyes ablaze with an otherworldly fire. With a guttural roar, it attacked my unsuspecting neighbors, its unearthly shrieks echoing through the night like a chorus of lost souls. I wanted to look away, to shield my eyes from the horrors unfolding before me, but I was frozen to the spot, paralyzed by a fear unlike anything I had ever known. I watched as they fought desperately against the darkness, their screams lost in the void of the night. In a moment of desperation, I reached for the phone, my trembling fingers fumbling against the keys as I dialed 911. But as the line connected, 
I found myself met with nothing but silence, a cold, indifferent void that swallowed my words without a trace. Panic seized me then. I snapped back into reality so I could help my neighbors. I pleaded with the operator, begged them to listen, to believe me when I said that something terrible was happening across the street. But their response was swift and final, a click followed by the empty static of a disconnected line. Tears welled in my eyes as I stared helplessly at the phone in my hand, the weight of my loneliness pressing down upon me. In that moment, I felt utterly and irreversibly alone, a solitary witness to horrors beyond my comprehension. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the darkness receded, leaving nothing but silence in its wake. I watched as my neighbor's lights flickered back to life, their windows once again aglow with the warmth of domesticity. But the illusion was shattered, the feeling of normalcy crumbling like dust in the wind. For I knew now that something sinister lurked just beneath the surface. And so, as the night wore on and the shadows grew ever longer, I remained vigilant for in the darkness, there are no heroes, no saviors, only those who dare to bear witness to the horrors that lie hidden in the night. Leaving the office, I took in the crisp evening air, eager to escape the suffocating cubicle of my workplace. With my book bag slung over my shoulder, I took on the familiar 15-minute commute home, oblivious to the darkness that trailed behind me. As I navigated the city streets, a sense of unease settled over me, a subtle shift in the atmosphere that nearly went unnoticed. The scent of damp concrete mingled with the faint hint of cigarette smoke, a reminder of the city's restless energy. I quickened my pace, eager to escape the lingering sense of dread that gnawed at my senses. Little did I know, I was not alone in the quiet streets. Unknown to me, a shadow lurked in the darkness. It followed my every move. The first hint of danger came in the form of a fleeting glance, a pair of eyes that lingered too long, filled with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. Ignoring the warning signs, I kept walking, convincing myself it was only paranoia. But the feeling persisted, a nagging sensation that clawed at my consciousness. With each passing moment, the feeling of being watched intensified like a suffocating weight. I quickened my pace, but the shadow persisted, a relentless pursuer that refused to be shaken. As I approached my apartment building, a sense of relief washed over me, the promise of safety just in reach. But as I fumbled for my keys, a chill ran down my spine. The shadow was still there, its presence lurking ominously in the darkness. With trembling hands, I unlocked the door and stepped inside, the weight of the night's events pressing down on me like a suffocating fog. The scent of my own fear mingled with the stale air of the hallway, a grim reminder of the darkness that had followed me home. As I ran up the stairs to my apartment, the feeling of being watched lingered, a phantom presence that trailed behind me like a sinister shadow. The feeling of apprehension hung heavy on my shoulders. My heart raced, the rhythmic thud echoing loud in my ears. When I reached my door, I fumbled for my keys, the metallic jangle a stark contrast to the oppressive silence of the night. But before I could unlock the door, a sound echoed through the hallway. Footsteps, slow and deliberate, approaching from behind. The feeling of dread was overwhelming, 
as I turned to face the lurking darkness. And there, just beyond sight, was the shadow that had haunted my every step, a figure peeking around the corner, its features obscured by the darkness of the long corridor. With a sense of impending doom, I stumbled backward, my mind racing with thoughts of escape. But the figure remained, unmoving, its presence was bone-chilling. Weeks passed, but the shadow remained, a constant stalker that haunted my every waking moment. It was hard to catch some sleep. My dreams were haunted by visions of the figure that lurked in the darkness. Then one day, the truth was revealed. The shadow was not a figment of my imagination, but of a twisted obsession. The stalker was a secret admirer from work. They had followed me home. His intentions were unknown and certainly unwelcome. The shocking news sent shockwaves through the office, and the stalker was swiftly dealt with, his employment terminated, and his access removed. Security escorted him from the office. But the scars of his stalking remained. I know that this nightmare was far from over. The stalker may have been removed, but the echoes of their footsteps lingered, a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked in the darkness. The winter night draped its icy tendrils over the quiet town the moon casting haunting shadows upon the snow-covered streets. As I sat by the fireplace seeking warmth from the biting cold, a sharp knock shattered the quietness, echoing through the empty house. It was well past midnight, and the thought of visitors at such an hour sent a shiver down my spine. With caution, I approached the door, met with the frigid air of the winter night. No one at the door but a small envelope left on the doorstep. I tore it open, revealing a single, chilling message. Will you survive the night? Dread settled like a heavy blanket over me as I read the ominous words, my heart hammering in my chest. Before I could process the meaning behind the sinister note, the lights flickered and died, leaving me engulfed in darkness. Panic seized me as I fumbled for a flashlight, the scent of fear thick in the air. The darkness pressed in around me, suffocating and oppressive, as if the very night itself conspired against me. With each passing moment, the air grew colder, sending shivers racing down my spine. I was alone, stranded in the black abyss, with only the echo of my own heartbeat for company. Suddenly, a sound shattered the silence, a faint scratching at the window. My breath caught in my throat as I crept toward the source of the noise. Through the frosted glass, I caught sight of a shadowy figure lurking outside in the cold darkness. With trembling hands, I reached for the phone, only to find it dead in my grasp. The realization hit me like a physical blow. I was utterly alone, at the mercy of whatever malevolent force lurked in the night. As the hours dragged on, the darkness seemed to take on a life of its own. Shadows danced upon the walls, casting shapes that seemed to leer at me from the depths of the abyss. The scent of dread hung heavy in the air, thick and suffocating. And then, just as the night reached its darkest hour, a sound echoed through the stillness, a heavy thud against the door. My heart felt like it lunged out of my chest as I watched in horror, the feeling of terror mixed with the bitter cold of the night. With a trembling hand, I reached for the door, my pulse pounding in my ears. As I flung it open, a man bolted towards me, his face hidden by the darkness. Panic surged through me as he lunged forward, intent on breaking into my house. In a desperate bid for survival, I slammed the door shut, trapping his arm in the doorframe. The man howled in pain, his cries echoing through the night, but I refused to let him. 
With each passing moment, the struggle intensified. Driven by sheer instinct, I reached for my car keys, the metal biting into my skin as I plunged them into the man's flesh. He recoiled in agony, his eyes wild with terror, before finally retreating into the darkness from where he came. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, casting its golden glow upon the snow-covered landscape, I breathed a sigh of relief. The darkness receded, chased away by the warmth of the morning sun, and I knew that I had survived the night and whatever twisted games the man had thrown my way. Valentine's Day, a day of love and romance, held the promise of a new beginning for me. A blind date arranged by my friends. A chance to find love and share a new connection. Little did I know, this Valentine's Day would become a nightmare. As I stepped into the dimly lit restaurant, the scent of roses mixed with the aroma of gourmet cuisine. Anticipation hung thick, blending with the soft melodies of a violinist serenading the couples. Nervous excitement coursed through me my heart fluttering in anticipation of meeting my mystery date. He arrived, a vision of handsomeness with a smile that promised warmth and affection. His name was Adam, his eyes sparkling with a charm that captivated me from the moment we exchanged greetings. The scent of his cologne, masculine and intoxicating, lingered in the air as we shared laughter and stories over candlelit dinner. But beneath his enchanting facade lurked a darkness I could not perceive. As the night wore on, subtle hints of unease gnawed at my senses. The restaurant, once a sanctuary of romance, now seemed to hold hidden shadows, obscured by the flickering candlelight. As we parted ways, Adam suggested a moonlit stroll through the nearby park, a gesture that seemed innocent enough. The scent of jasmine wafted on the evening breeze, its sweet fragrance masking the foreboding sense of unease that gripped me. Ignoring the warning signs, I followed him into the darkness. The park, shrouded in shadows, took on an eerie quality under the moon's silvery glow. The scent of damp earth mixed with the distant rustle of leaves, creating an atmosphere of unsettling calm. With each step, the air grew heavier, laden with the weight of impending danger. Suddenly, Adam's demeanor shifted, his smile replaced by a cold, calculating stare. A chill crept down my spine as I realized the truth. I was not his date, but his prey. Panic surged, my heart racing as I attempted to flee from the trap that had ensnared me. But Adam was relentless, his footsteps echoing through the darkness as he pursued me with a determination born of madness. With each passing moment, the shadows seemed to close in, threatening to consume me whole. As I stumbled through the dark paths of the park, a glimmer of hope emerged, the distant sound of approaching sirens. The scent of relief washed over me, mingling with the sweat and tears that stained my trembling form. Help was near. With renewed determination, I pressed forward. The distant wail of sirens growing louder with each step, the darkness receded, replaced by the soft glow of streetlights that illuminated the path to safety. The scent of freedom, once a distant dream, now filled the air with its intoxicating promise. And then, just as hope seemed within grasp, Adam emerged from the shadows, a specter of terror in the moonlight, his eyes, once filled with deceit, now burned with a pure rage. The scent of danger permeated the air, a reminder of the nightmare that threatened to consume me. But before he could strike, the sound of approaching footsteps shattered the silence. A police officer, drawn by the commotion, emerged from the darkness, his presence a beacon of hope in the night. He commanded Adam to stand down, his reign of terror brought to an abrupt end the police officer received a tip from the restaurant, and our waiter identified my date as a wanted criminal. He takes his victims on dates, 
brings them to a dark, secluded park, and kidnaps them. As the handcuffs clicked around his wrists, a sense of relief washed over me. The nightmare was over, the darkness banished by the light of justice. And as I watched Adam being led away into the police car, I knew that I had survived the blind date from hell, emerging stronger than ever before.